Hello, I'm Crazy Moth Lady, otherwise known as Saturnidae, and welcome back, or welcome, to a, a new video. So this is different from the videos I normally make, because I normally make gaming content, or art content, and stuff like that, and I guess this is art content, because you're seeing a speed paint behind this. This is basically just me rambling about whatever I want, really. Uh, so... To start off this, like, possibly series, I'm going to talk about hermit crabs. Now, you might think, hey, crazy moth lady, shouldn't you be talking about, you know, moths? But I figured this is an interest that I had when I was littler, so it's kind of chronologically going to my interests now. It's also an interest I've already fully researched a lot about, whereas moths I'm still learning and I'm still reading. And I know a lot more about them too, so it would be harder to make it into a concise, easy video to watch. So I figured I'd make it about hermit crabs first, because that's something I know about, and but also not something that I, it's so important to me that I'm afraid to mess it up. Now that being said, uh, this video it might not be completely factually correct like i wouldn't go to this video if like you're working on a class assignment or an essay about hermit crabs for some reason because i'm not fact checking this i'm just regurgitating facts and knowledge that i've learned over time having owned a hermit crab for two years and then two others uh each four a year consecutively with the other one so and also language uh stuff i learned when preparing to have this pet and over the course of having this pet so it might not be fully factually correct so um first off what are hermit crabs so i'm mostly going to be talking on about hermit crabs that live on land because that what that's what i've experienced with but they are arthropods crustaceans who live both in the water and on land often in tropical areas and they are often subject to the pet trade which is like if you go to a beach you will see them on the boardwalk and I'll talk more about that later but I'll talk more about what they actually are for now so they so hermit crabs to grow they molt which means they shed their exoskeleton however part of their exoskeleton isn't strong like the rest they don't have a super strong exoskeleton or even one at all i'm not sure around the back half of them their abdomen so they need to protect that because they don't have any natural protection for it so they use shells from mollusks things like snails things like and like cone shell snails and moon snails and little and generally, snails in general. You'll see hermit crabs wearing things like bottle caps and stuff like that, where shells are scarce, but trash isn't, because we live in a world that's very polluted, of course. So, you'll see them wearing that, but generally, it's shells. And shells, they have to be specifically, like, especially for uh, land hermit crabs, they need to have no holes because hermit crabs also store water, both wa salt water and fresh water usually, up there in order to keep the ba their back halves wet and to be able to like have that and stay moist. Or So they need shells that are nice and perfect and don't have a lot of holes. So another thing about hermit crabs is despite what the name may imply, uh, they, it's, they're actually named hermit crabs because their homes are with them and they like, or and they hide in their homes maybe, I'm not quite sure. But hermit crabs are actually really social creatures, especially the land ones. They'll actually live in huge colonies, like hundreds fold. And when they molt, they have to change out their shells because they need shells that fit them. So... They might be in colonies, huge colonies, and when one molts and changes out for a bigger shell, it might have a mass exodus of everyone just trading to the shell size up that belonged to another crab. And I think that's just a really cute, fun fact about them. But some other things about hermit crabs is you might not expect them to make noise because oh, they're just little, they're just little crustaceans scuttling along the beach. 
But no, I've had hermit crabs. Let me tell you, they're nocturnal. So at late at night, I'd hear little chirping, like squeaking sounds. Like if you've ever had a guinea pig, they kind of actually sound like guinea pigs squeaking. But they make these like really cute chirping sounds. And so I would just be laying in bed at night and hearing them scuttle around and scrape against their terrarium and make little chirping sounds. And it was just very cute. And now... Another thing is, if you are having hermit crabs, you don't need to be concerned about their gender and them possibly having kids because they actually release their eggs into the water, which they're in a planktonic stage for a while. It's called meroplanktonic when they are pl plankton-like, which means they're just free-floating uh, in the water for part of their life. And then once they're adults and they're mature, they crawl up on the beach and they're no longer planktonic. They're just uh, they're scuttling around, you know? And so, hermit crabs, that's kind of a basis of what hermit crabs are in the wild. They are omnivorous. They will eat both plants and they'll eat, like, meat and stuff like that. They're scavengers, that kind of thing. Um, so now I'm gonna talk more about them as, like, pets and them and caring for them properly and stuff like that. So fun facts that might shock some people who've had hermit crabs before but hermit crabs can actually live sometimes up to 32 years in captivity and now i had a hermit crab that lived for two years hermione so hermione you know a little pun but then it's there and then since they're social you want to have at least two so i had another one i believe i named it kermit like Kermit the Hermit, because I was a little kid, and they're really cute names. And that one lived for one year, and when it died, I replaced it with another one that I got off the boardwalk, because the other two, the first two, I got from, like, an actual exotic pet store. But this one, I happened to be on the boardwalk, and I was like, hey, I guess I'll just get a hermit crab here, you know? And that one also lived for a year. So all in all, um... I had two hermit crabs that lived for one year each and one that lived for two years. And that's actually not that much time compared to the 32-year possibility. But most people will say that at most, they've, had her they've heard of hermit crabs that lived six months. And that's because there's not a lot of information on how to care for these animals correctly. But hermit crabs, just like any other small animal that's typically sold as a, a children's pet, is not for kids. They are exotic animals that need special care. So for one, you want to have a large terrarium. You don't want to have a little tiny thing. And then you want to have at least two inches of some sort of substrate. It's recommended you have two different kinds, kind of just so like they can have a textural dis uh, difference. Like if you lived on a on an area that's carpeted your whole life you wouldn't sometimes want to go on an area with like a wood floor that kind of thing so i had um coconut fiber substrate and then like sand this like pet sand substrate that also had calcium in it because having calcium either like through eggshells or having in special substrate can really help your hermit crab to like have a strong healthy exoskeleton and then once you have, and then once you have two oh, inches of substrate because they love burrowing, they love digging. If you get a glass terrarium, which should be what you're getting, you'll they'll sometimes like tunnel up to the glass, so you'll see their tunnels running through, and it's really interesting to see. Then you also want to have climbing materials and stuff like that, so they can climb. And anything you put into your tank, like any, like climbing materials any shells any like sponges you want to boil them first like it's not an absolute must but that can stop fungi and bacteria from getting in and damaging your crabs so another thing is you want to have two types of water at all times like i said earlier they need both fresh water and salt water so you're going to want to have fresh water that's dechlorinated and salt water also dechlorinated so you're going to need to get like filter like water treatment and that's one of the things that's kind of hard especially if, as someone with adhd that has problems like com doing tasks consistently is you need to make sure you give them water every three days at least and then you need to make 
or every day. You need to give them water every day and make sure you fill it, top it off. You need to treat the water with the dechlorinator, wait 24 hours treat, and to get your fresh water, and then treat it with dechlorinator and then some salt water treatment, and then wait for 24 hours. So I suggest having a mason jar filled with water for each type so that you have like a supply not and you don't have to treat water every day you need to treat water only like once a week or so and then you want to make sure their container is moist by having a top but you don't want to spray water in because that can make fungus so you just want to have their water dishes and hopefully it'll keep it pretty wet in itself then you want to have a heat pad as well somewhere like connected to your tank because you need it to be warm just make sure it's not like super hot because you don't want them to like be uncomfortable when they're digging around if you have it on the bottom of the tank then you also want to have food you can buy hermit crab food from some pet stores and or from the internet and you want to feed them every few days and you need to replace their food so that mold doesn't start growing so that's kind of like the basis of your setup for your hermit crabs and then lots of people will talk about how active their hermit crabs are. That's likely because they don't have anywhere to go. They kind of just have to sit there at all times because people will put them in these tiny mesh things they'll pick up from pet stores that don't really, like, they're, they're made for carrier. They're carrier cases. Sometimes they're used for, like, if your hermit crab is molting and some of your other hermit crabs are aggressive, you might take them while they're molting and put them in that small case because when they're weak, uh, because they're molting, they don't have, like, a strong exoskeleton. You don't want them for that, like, week or so to be, or, like, few days to be killed by the other hermit crabs. Because hermit crabs will kill each other and will eat them, which is also why you always want to make sure your hermit crabs are around the same size. So you need to be careful about that, and you don't want to have those tiny tanks. Um, another thing is, uh... I would suggest uh, as soon as you can ma convincing your hermit crab to switch from any painted shell you might have got if you bought them from the boardwalk to just a normal shell because those painted shells can often have toxins in them. When that paint flinks off and gets in the water then your hermit crab is going to get hurt because it's going to get poisoned. So you want to make sure you switch your, your uh, shell out as soon as possible. And then this isn't a must do, but something that I suggest is not necessarily buying like a variety pack of like a hundred or so shells for like five dollars or something like that. Go if pot you are able to go more expensive for less because that means they're more likely to be ethically sourced. Because there's just lots of examples of people like collecting these shells by just like killing whatever is inside so that they get these nice like perfect shells, and that's not really something that I uh am okay with but like of course at the end of the day you're you have to do what's financially possible for you and or your family or just what's allowed to for you to do so that's kind of that with like shells and stuff like that and then of course some you gotta kind of get to know your hermit crabs because sometimes they'll be aggressive and you need to be and, like, I've seen examples of hermit crabs, despite the fact they're usually social, there is some that will, like, kill any other hermit crabs, so they kind of have to live in isolation. So just get to know your crabs and get to kind of coexist with them. And then sometimes you can take them out to play. I said, What I did is I took, like, a wooden, like, uh, tray, like you would use to put shoes in. I put a, a towel down. And then I put, like, some objects in there, and they'll scuttle around. However, stress can be bad for hermit crabs, and as it can for any other animal. So I suggest not only doing that occasionally when you want to get them out. Um, other than that, be careful to carefully hold them with both hands so they don't, like, go over your hands and fall off. Don't put them on any high surface. Um, always keep them on the ground. That kind of thing because you don't want them to fall off and get hurt so let's see is there anything else about having them as pets that i need to cover let me think uh sponges are nice if you can get some like real natural sponges and like of course boil them first and put them in uh you're welcome to go creative with how you decorate your tank you can have it themed but make sure it's big 
and make sure it has substrate. I know I made my food dish an abalone shell because it was very pretty and they can and you can definitely do that and have like creative ways of decorating your tank. Just remember that hermit crabs are not toys or like little decorative pieces. Hermit crabs are animals and and just like any other type of animal, you want to handle them with care and prioritize their happiness in life over aesthetics. So that's something important to remember. Um, let's see. I think I've covered pretty much anything that I can come to mind about having them as pets. If you think of anything else, you can feel free to let me know and I'll try to answer questions in the comments as someone who owned hermit crabs. Um, so now let me think about like cool hermit crab stuff I can tell you about. So there's this species called the coconut crab and these hermit crabs are hermit crabs that have evolved to be so large that at a certain point they're too large to fit into any type of shell. So that's where they get their name from, coconut crabs. Because they didn't have any shell they could fit into, they would use like halves of coconuts, they would use various different things you can if you look up coconut crab you can find pictures of like them wearing all these crazy things then once they get to a certain size though unlike any other species of hermit crabs they develop a hard exoskeleton on their abdomen so they no longer need uh shells and so you can look up pictures they can get pretty huge and um you might have heard stories about, like, in island areas, if they get, like, a freeze, the iguanas will have, like, frozen and they'll fall out of trees and, like, possibly give people concussions. The same thing can happen for uh, coconut crabs. It's a very interesting thing. And then another thing is, while I did say I'm going to be talking about mainly land hermit crabs, there are mar there's marine hermit crabs as well, of course. And one thing that has happened with marine hermit crabs is they've evolved this sort of symbiosis with anemones, where they will put these uh, hermit crab, these anemones, on their shells, and those anemones will keep them safe from things that want to eat their hermit crabs, while the hermit, while the anemones will get like the food waste from then from the hermit crabs that the hermit crabs have stirred up and stuff like that. And that's called a commensual mutualistic uh symbiotic relationship because it no it's called a mutualistic symbiotic relationship i'm sorry the commensualistic is when it only benefits one person so that's a really fun fact that i like about hermit crabs in the marine area they'll have these very decorated blinged out shells because they'll put things on them to keep it safe and then of course like sometimes things will just kind of land there and stick there and live on the shell just rent free um so that's another curious thing about them i really think hermit crabs are a lot cuter than most people give them credit for they're just so cute and i know that like i like bugs and i think bugs are cute and i don't have a different different definition of cute than some people might but I think they're just creatures that deserve a lot more appreciation. And I guess that's probably about the end of my ramble. Thank you so much for listening to it. I've been Crazy Moth Lady. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more of these rambles and let me know what you think. Thank you.